Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. Now, Adobe Premiere Pro and Final Cut 10 are both great pieces of editing software, but which one is right for you? Here's 12 things you need to know before you make your call. Now, personally, I do use Adobe Premiere Pro and Final Cut 10 almost every week. All of the videos on this channel are now edited in Final Cut, whereas on my corporate work, promotional videos, sales videos, right up to documentaries, are all edited in Adobe Premiere. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses, so to help you decide which is best for you, I'll run through the six things I love about each of them and why I use one over the other for different projects. Cost differences aside, this will give you enough information to decide which features are most important for you and which editing software you should choose. So let's start out by looking at six things that I love about Final Cut 10. Now these are in no particular order, but the first one, hands down, is the ability to edit 4K footage just seamlessly. It's almost like some magic sorcery is going on because no other editing software compares to how well Final Cut edits 4K video footage. I've been able to edit 4K video files off external hard drives just using a MacBook Pro. Now that's insane. If this was using Adobe Premiere, you'd have to set the quality down to a quarter or even an eighth. And even then playback may not be anywhere near as smooth or seamless as it is in Final Cut. So that's a massive plus. And really it's due to all the background rendering that takes place in Final Cut, which has a little bit of a downside in that it can chew up a lot of your hard drive space, but the benefit is the power and the performance that you have and just makes your editing process seamless. Number two is that Final Cut Pro doesn't drain your battery life so quick if you're working on a laptop, which for me is awesome. I do a lot of work on planes, I travel around a lot. It was actually the reason that I bought a Mac in the first place, or MacBook Pro in the first place, was so that I could edit on the plane. Now, a lot of laptops will say that they've got huge battery life, but the moment that you open anything that's processor or GPU intensive, then the battery life just goes out the window incredibly quick. Even installing Adobe Premiere and running that on Mac, there's no optimization there. So your battery life, you're lucky to get a couple of hours. But Final Cut Pro, the battery life on it, it's optimized to work on the systems. It's just incredible how long the battery actually lasts for editing video. And for that, as far as I'm concerned, it's second to none. And number three, I love the powerful motion titles that you can add in and animations that you can add in to your editing projects and edit them live on the screen without having to take them into something like Adobe After Effects and edit everything in a separate program. What you can get with Final Cut is these Apple Motion templates that you can purchase on places like Video Hive that drop directly into your timeline that you can edit the text and customize up without leaving your timeline. That's been a real game changer for editing, even this video, all the titles that you're seeing in here are all done inside of Final Cut. So that's pretty awesome. It saves a heap of time on rendering and also not needing to have any other software installed or purchased. Now, while you can get titles like this in Adobe Premiere, in order to edit them, you'd normally need software like Adobe After Effects and use the Adobe Dynamic Link to talk between the two programs. So if you just wanna make a simple text change or change your titles throughout your entire video, then it just means you have gotta keep relinking and going into Adobe After Effects, editing your titles, and then coming back to Adobe Premiere to make any further adjustments. So all of this in Final Cut is seamless and it's literally click of a button. Number four is the magnetic timeline. Now I've got to admit I absolutely hated this when I first started using it after coming from Premiere, but the magnetic timeline is incredibly powerful and it makes working in Final Cut really quick. So what the magic timeline does is it gives you a set storyline. And in that storyline, you can pick up pieces and move them around and it will automatically close and open gaps and shuffle everything around automatically for you in your timeline. But what it does beyond that is it keeps all of the clips that are associated with the clips in that storyline. So if you've got the layers above it, you can link them to that story clip. So that if you move that story clip left or right or move it around in your timeline, then all the associated, all the attached clips and layers and effects and sound will all stick with that clip. So that's pretty awesome. Now number five, I really like the import tool in Final Cut. The way that you can preview your files, whether it's video or audio, you can actually see them and play them back and hear them before you actually click that import button. In Adobe Premiere Pro, you just 
presented with a file browser just to pick the files that you'd like to import. Whereas with Final Cut, if you can actually go through and look at the clips, you're only importing the clips that you actually want to have in your project, instead of maybe importing a whole folder knowing that the files that you want are somewhere in there. So again, it just makes the editing process a bit quicker if you're not looking to import a heap of footage and if you're looking for specific clips. So that brings us to number six. Now number six is the render times. The render times on Final Cut Pro are just insane. In a lot of cases for me and the work that I'm doing in there, the render times are non-existent because it's all done in the background. So what that means for me with these videos is when I hit file, share to YouTube, it actually just starts uploading straight away. There is no export. There's no waiting for it to render out and save to your hard drive and then upload. The upload starts as soon as I hit share to YouTube. So that is just, that's, I can't even explain how awesome that is because if you've done any sort of editing before, then you can waste so much time while you're waiting for your computers to save your video files. Now, when I was editing these YouTube videos in Adobe Premiere, they take on average 40 minutes, 50 minutes to export and then start uploading. So at least this way, if there's an issue with the video file, I'm playing it back, I'm not happy with it, there's a minor change I wanna make, it's a no brainer. It's no hassle to jump in, make the quick change and upload another version. Instead of having to wait 40 minutes or 50 minutes to be able to see if there is an issue with the video. Not that there should be. Okay, so that's enough with Final Cut Pro. Let's look at the six things that I like about Adobe Premiere Pro. And the first one is that it's cross-platform compatible, which means that it works on both Windows and on Mac. For me, that's a huge thing. I personally hate being tied to an environment, to be Mac only or PC only. I like the ability to be able to jump between different computers. If there's a better PC that comes out, that's actually gonna make my workload quicker, then I would definitely consider it. And some of the work I do is on PC. So having the software that is exactly the same across both of the major platforms is a huge benefit, and it makes it easier to collaborate with other people and share projects around, but that's number two. So we'll jump straight to it. Number two is that it's easy to transfer your files between different editors. I'm actually working on a project right now that has two editors that are working in Windows, I'm on a Mac and I have another editor that's also on a Mac. So there's four editors in this project, two Windows, two Mac. We're able to seamlessly transfer the project file, just the project file, because we've all got copies of the footage and it's a no brainer. It relinks instantly on all the systems. So having the same software on both Mac and PC, but also having it easily transferable between editors is just amazing. Now transferring projects externally and working with other editors externally and moving between systems is one thing, but Adobe Premiere Pro also lets you work over a network and import network footage and actually open a networked project file, which is something that Final Cut doesn't use. So right here, we have a shared network storage and all the project files are stored on there. So Adobe Premiere Pro will actually let me open and run a project file over the network, whereas Final Cut won't. So for any office or team environment, that's pretty powerful. So now onto number three, and that's color correction. Adobe Premiere Pro has fantastic color correction options, capabilities, whatever you wanna call it. While Final Cut does have color correction built in, obviously all good editing software will, the color correction that's in Adobe Premiere Pro is next level and not even by a little bit. It's probably multiple levels up. It is awesome. It's also something that they're updating all the time and adding new features and adding more power in behind it. And it's got to the point where it's, yeah, it's fantastic. The fourth thing that I like about Adobe Premiere Pro is the amount of export presets that there are. There are presets for everything, right down from your lowest resolution videos, right up to a full digital cinema file that you can use to export and take directly to a cinema to play it there. So to have that built in and to also have all the queuing so you can queue up multiple versions and to even save your queues so that you can use them all the time is incredibly powerful. Number five is the integration with other Adobe programs. So the integration with Adobe After Effects, with Photoshop, with Audition, it's just seamless integration so that you're able to open and collaborate and quickly work across the Adobe range of projects seamlessly from your timeline. And that then leads us to number six, which is the file management. 
Personally, I love the way that Adobe Premiere handles and deals with your files and your, your media management. So all your assets, all your video files, your graphics, your music, the way that you can bring those in and organize them into bins and folder structure, I think personally, it absolutely dwarfs what you've got in regards to events and projects in Final Cut. It's so much easier and much more logical, as far as I'm concerned, the way that Adobe Premiere manages its files. Now this really comes into play when you're working on big projects because it is imperative that you have all your folder structures and everything set in a logical way so that not only you can use it, but potentially any other editors can jump on and find everything and pick up and get running on the project straight away. So this is something that Adobe Premiere does really well and it also then helps with any backups or archiving of projects and also transferring projects between different computers and different editors as well. So depending on your workflow, some of these factors will be important to you or they may not matter at all. So as for which editing software you should choose, choose the one that ticks the most boxes for you. At the end of the day, they're both great pieces of editing software. As I said, I use both of them every week. If you found this video helpful, we'd really appreciate a share, a thumbs up, or a comment. It really makes a huge difference. Make sure you head over to primalvideo.com forward slash subscribe to subscribe to our weekly video updates. I'll see you next time.